Hey hoes! For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kenzie and I'm so happy that you found my channel. Welcome to day 8 of my countdown to Halloween where I'm posting videos every single day in the month of October. Today's video is the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Um, this has haunted many people all across the world for so so many years. Um, this sweet little three-year-old disappeared almost out of thin air. Um, there was a lot of different theories going around. You know, there's just a lot of frustration around this case um, to begin with. Before I do get started about the Madeline McCann case, I could not talk about everything in this case. So I touch on this at the end as well. But like, there's just so much information because this case started in 2003. And there is updates up into last week. So there's so much in the span of the past 18 years. 18 years that's 18 years I can't cover every single little detail of this case I wish I could but let's just get into the Madeline McCann disappearance Madeline McCann was born May 12th 2003 to her parents Kate and Jerry in England Madeline is the oldest sibling of three she welcomed her twin siblings in 2005 february 2005 she um welcomed her twin little siblings amelia and sean so that's really all you need to know about the family um there were a family of five three young kids all under the age of three so we're gonna fast forward to may of 2007 um the family went on vacation with other family friends. So there was a couple families, I believe three families. I don't know how many children in total, but there were three different families that went on vacation to Portugal and they stayed at the Ocean Club Resort. Um, Madeline was almost four years old, not quite short by like a week or two. Um, and the twins had just turned two. So keep that in mind. May 3rd, 2007, around 8.30 p.m., um, Kate and Jerry left, left their three young children asleep in their apartment and they went down to the bar where they met their friends for the night. So they had kind of a system because um, the McCann's weren't the only family on that trip that had young children. So they took turns checking on the children about every 20 minutes. Um, so they would all visit at the bar, eat, whatever. Um, 20 minutes would go. Kate would go check on the kids. 20 minutes would go, their family friend would go check on the kids. They had a system set up, but it is said that this wasn't the only night that they had left the children alone in the apartments and that even the employees of the resort that they were staying at noticed that they had a pattern and noticed that they left their children. And it was like clockwork every 20 minutes. So anybody could have picked up on this pattern. That being said, this is one of the first things the public picked apart. Um, they took a lot of criticism for leaving their young children alone in the apartment. Obviously, the resort you were in had lots of nanny facilities and they weren't that expensive to use. And you both were professionals earning money. Another criticism that's put to you is why didn't you just pay to have a, a nanny if you wanted to go out for dinner? Yeah, I mean, it's not a question of money. We did uh, what we thought was best in the kids' routines. And I think as parents, um, we were... We had a very good routine in terms of the whole bath, bed, story type thing. And and I, I take your point, but for me, you know, if your children are asleep upstairs in a bedroom and you're dining in the garden, you're out of sight and you can't hear them. Um, and that's the similar thing to me. We were Except I guess that most people's homes are secure. Sure. You know, th this was not a secure property. People could come in and off the street if they wanted to. That That's where the criticism, I guess comes at its most fierce towards you is you know you're, you're intelligent people and you were certainly good parents there's no one's questioning that from all accounts that we've all heard it's just when you have people coming in and off a street like that and it's not your home and it's not really secure i for one don't like that fact i for one i, I wouldn't publicly criticize them but it to me it doesn't sit right to leave your three children under the age of four alone in an apartment in a country that you're not from. Um, to me, that just doesn't sit right. It didn't sit right with the majority of the world. They received a bunch of criticism and scrutiny for that decision. However, we will get more into that at towards the end of the video. 
Another thing that left a lot of people angry at this case and angry at the parents is that they left the patio door unlocked. So they didn't want to go in through the front door because they say that it made too much noise. Whereas the patio door had one of those sliding doors and so they chose to leave the patio door unlocked. Um, so they could just sneak onto the patio, check on the kids, check, check, kids, children, kidring, kidrings, check on the children and then go back out the patio door and back down to the bar. So that's the second thing that a lot of people scrutinize them for is for leaving the door unlocked. So not only were the children left unattended and alone in this apartment in this place where they aren't from, they were left alone in an unlocked apartment. So they received a lot of scrutiny. I'm sure you've heard about this case and I'm sure you've heard all of the scrutiny that this family has been targeted for. So putting all that information behind us, we are going to move on to 10 p.m. when it was Kate's turn to check on the children. She went into the apartment and discovered that her daughter Madeline was not there. It is said that Kate immediately went back to the bar and said that Madeline had been taken, um, which again, red flag. Um, not only did she leave her other two children alone again, she went back and she immediately said that Madeline had been taken which for many people, you would just say, she's gone, she's gone, something happened, where is she, she's missing. You wouldn't automatically assume that she had been taken. Like I said, people were jumping to the conclusion and like scrutinizing her for jumping to the conclusion that Madeline had been taken instead because there's so many things that could have happened that night. But immediately Kate said that she had been taken and she left her two children there. So this is why the public was so frustrated. It's just like one thing after the other with these parents is and like they just face so much scrutiny because of their poor decisions and the public made it known that these were poor decisions. So Madeline's missing and immediately everybody's pinpointing the parents. There is so many frustrations and the parents are seen as the villains due to their actions and their reactions and just in general for the most part the public turned on Kate and Jerry very very quickly um they were seen as the villains in this case and they the public immediately thought of them as suspects to their daughter's disappearance Although that is the story of the disappearance of Madeline McCann, I'm now going to get into the aftermath. Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, there's updates up until last week. There has been a lot happened in the past 18 years. Um, so now it's the timeline and suspects, etc. So May 14th, 2007, just two weeks after Madeline had disappeared, Robert Murat was named as a suspect. Robert was a British ex ex expat. I don't know what that is. He was a British expat that lived close to where Madeline and her family had been staying. Um, however, he was never arrested over the disappearance of Madeline. May 26, 2007. Police issue a description of a man carrying a little girl towards the beach that many people on the resort had seen. This little girl fit the description of Madeline and was wearing pink pajamas, which is said to be what Madeline was wearing that night. Um, and so I'll insert the sketch and I'll insert, I don't know, I found it on the internet. I don't know if it's like security footage or what, but there's two pictures that I can throw up on the screen for you guys about the description the police gave on May 26, 2007. Moving forward, several months later, September 2007, Kate and Jerry were named as suspects in the disappearance of their own daughter. Um, many people, many people thought that this should have happened long, long ago because at this point it had been four months since Madeline had disappeared. However, a little less than a year later, July 21st, 2008, they were no longer considered suspects and they actually were rewarded hundreds of thousands in pounds, British money pounds, um, in damages from the British newspapers. So April 25th, 2012. So we're getting a long time, like five years after Madeline had disappeared. The British detectives released a updated sketch of what Madeline could look like um, at the age of nine, which is how old Madeline would have been. 
at this time. They also stated that they had reason to believe that Madeline was still alive, although the Portugal police disagreed. So like I said, if I jumped into every little detail about this case, we would be here forever. Um, so I'm just going to jump forward a couple of years here. On December 2nd, 2016, detectives decided to re-examine um, the theory that Madeline could have been taken by a, um, could have been adopted abducted by a human trafficking gang um because it's a sad fact that madeline is a perfect candidate for human trafficking and it happens to a lot of missing people all across the world all ages all genders like human trafficking is a big issue in our world um so it's very possible that this is what happened to madeline however june 3rd 2020 just over a year ago today german police announce that a 43 year old man who is currently in prison has been named a suspect in the disappearance of Madeline. Originally Christian Brockner was remained nameless um, however he is now known to the public. Christian Brockner is a convicted pedophile um, having been incarcerated for currently for sexual contact with children girls and I believe his actual charge for why he is in jail right now is for raping an elderly woman. This information is very, very recent as in like early October recent, like a day before I filmed this recent. Um, so this case is still continuing on to this day. Investigations are still open. Um, Christian Brockner is being investigated for and suspect in many sex crimes over the years. This includes, and I am going to read it right off of my computer, um, a sex attack on a 10 year old girl that happened not far from where Madeline disappeared, a 1996 killing of a 16 year old in Belgium, a rape of a 20 year old Irish woman in Portugal 2004, um, a kidnapped kidnapping of a five-year-old German girl in 2015. So police started to focus on Christian Brockner in June 2020 because Christian got drunk and was telling a guy that he knew what happened to Madeline McCann. So obviously this guy took that information that he was told from Christian to the police and the police then started to look into it more and more. They took that tip and they searched his properties and his vehicles, finding child pornography, child abuse videos, as well as they found in his RV some little girls bathing suits. Um, they also looked at his criminal history, which of course included child, um, child children crimes sex crimes everything on all of the above but it also included things such as drug trafficking burglary um sexual assaults like we i said and um he has a history of targeting little girls and to just point the finger at him even more brockner was living near the resort that madeline mccann and her family were staying at when madeline went missing Brockner is currently in a high security prison for um, raping an elderly woman. So whether he is involved in Madeline's case or not, he is exactly where he needs to be. And I hope he stays safe for the rest of his life. Now let's talk about the theories. There is five main theories in this case. The first being the most common one is that the parents had something to do with it. I mean, there is so much wrong with what happened to Madeline. Number one, you don't leave your young children, like they were all under the age of four. You don't leave them alone in an apartment, especially not in a place where you aren't from, and especially not with the door unlocked. If you're, You shouldn't leave your children that young regardless, but lock the door if you do. Like, there's just so much wrong. And then the way they reacted, why um, Kate saying that she was taken, like, there's just so, so much wrong. The parents were highly scrutinized. This leads people to believe that the parents had given the children something to make sure that they did stay asleep and accidental overdose happened to Madeline and then they took it from there and it just became this big ordeal and this big thing. So the next theory is one that really doesn't have much evidence behind it, but 
The next theory is that it was a burglary gone wrong. However, like I said, there's not much evidence as as far as I can tell, there was nothing missing from the room that night. And but the theory goes that um, Madeline woke up and there were burglars in their apartment and to cover their tracks, they either took Madeline or they killed Madeline and took her body. Um, so either way, it said that the it was a burglary gone wrong. Now the next theory is actually the one I believe is most popular t in today's age. Back when this all happened in 2007, I believe the most popular theory was that the parents had something to do with it. But today I believe this is the most popular theory and that is being that Madeline was a victim of a pedophile. As I said previously, Christian Brockner, um, I think since that whole um, evidence and that he's a suspect came out so recently, um, I think it's very more, I think it's likely that this is one of the most um, widely believed or the most popular theory of the five, just because there is so much evidence linking them together. That Christian Brockner has a history. Madeline is basically his ideal target. Um, so I think this is the one that is most widely known as for today. I already talked all about Christian Brockner. So theory number four is something that so many missing people, no matter their age or their gender or just so many missing people are victims of human trafficking. Now, this is a very widely believed theory for Madeline as well, which is very possible because a lot, like I said, a lot of missing individuals are taken into trafficking, whether that's slaves or human trafficking in general, drug, tra dr drug trafficking or sex trafficking. There's just a lot of trafficking. It's a worldwide issue for um, everybody. But this is another theory, which of course there's no evidence to say that this is what happened to Madeline, but it's just common knowledge that this is what happens to a lot of missing people and the last theory that I'm going to be talking about is that Madeline simply just woke up and walked out of the apartment she woke up and she went to try and find her parents she woke up and she went to try and find her parents the door was unlocked so it wouldn't be hard for a three-year-old to open the sliding door and but the thing that I don't understand about this theory is it's literally the only thing that doesn't make sense with this theory is that her body would have most likely been found. Um, unless, of course, she walked as far to the ocean. Because really, there's a lot of bodies in the ocean. Um, but there's said to be an open construction zone. So if she would have walked off and fell into the construction zone, her body would have been found. If she walked off and got hit by a car, most likely her body would have been found. So like, that's the only thing that doesn't add up with that theory is that she really couldn't have gone so far to the point where um, she wouldn't have been found. Um, that's the only thing that doesn't make sense with that theory, but that is the last theory that I'm going to be talking about. Now, just some side notes is Netflix does have a docu-series on this. It is an eight part docu-series. Um, and it's all about Madeline and her disappearance. There are also hundreds of true crime creators here on YouTube with a lot, a lot, a lot of videos all about Madeline McCann. There's also so many articles about this case. There's just so much information on the internet about this little girl. Well, I guess she's really not that little anymore. If she is still alive, she would be 18. She'd be 18. So this happened so so long ago in 2007 and you know she would be 18 now and there's still new information coming out every single day or every single week like literally when i'm filming this the most recent information released about this case was yesterday so it is still a very active case and nobody has forgotten madeline mccann which is absolutely insane for a true crime story to be brought out throughout the past 14 years. Something I didn't know but I had also ordered today is Madeline McCann's mom wrote a book. 
Kate McCann um, wrote a book all about the disappearance of her daughter um, and all the proceeds of the book go back to the Madeline Fund. Um, so there's a whole website dedicated to Madeline McCann. I will throw it up on the screen. I will also link it in the description box as well as the pinned comment. But um, I feel like there are, like I feel like I didn't talk about a lot of aspects of this case and I didn't touch on a lot of the details of this case solely because it would be an incredibly long story it would be an incredibly long video like i already have a half an hour worth of footage and i didn't even include half of the information like this if i was to make an in-depth video it would be long 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 but if you guys are interested in a long in-depth video of every little aspect of this case let me know and i will be happy to make that for you <sighs> what do you guys think do you think there's a possibility that she's still alive do you think she was sold into human trafficking or do you think her parents had something to do with this um, let me know in the comments down below. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video that none of this information is my own. I got it all online, so none of this knowledge is my own. I don't, oh, I don't know the McCann family, so none of this information is my own. I found it all online. With that being said, that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you did enjoy. I, I feel really weird saying that after true crime videos but um i hope you enjoyed i post videos every single day in the month of october so i hope you subscribe so you never miss a video and i will see you in the next one bye